2023. So I definitely do want to continue to learn. So my partner and I are, we're looking into uh, two families in Jersey City. So we definitely are looking at this more in the lens of learning. We do want to be GPs. And I think in order to be great operators, you have to learn on the smaller scale before you take anyone's money. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of First Gen Mastery. In today's episode, we're joined by Christina, a multifamily investor based out of NYC. How are you doing, Christina? Thanks for joining. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast today. Yeah, so thank you for being here. Uh, let's dig right into it then. So tell us a little bit about your story and your journey. How did you get involved in real estate? Sure. So I think, um, you know, a lot of people I've met so far in terms of like, how did real estate ever come into the picture? I think I follow a very similar path where um, born and raised in New York, my parents are immigrants, always been taught to work really hard, climb the corporate ladder. And um, I think I got interested in real estate this past year and a half. Uh, my dad's always been involved in real estate. We have a few rentals. But what really kicked off was um, after meeting Perry. Um, we went to a real estate conference together. He, we are both Duke alumni, um, but different year. And after going to the conference, it was for a multifamily conference. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I never knew that owning commercial multifamily real estate was available to the average person. You know, I always thought you need to have millions of dollars to invest. But after going to that conference, I realized that, you know, the average person can really be involved and reach financial freedom. So from there, I've been very involved in learning more about syndications, uh, multifamily and asking my dad also. Um, I never looked at my dad as an expert, but over the years or you know, after coming out of that conference, I've been asking him like, oh, you know, you know, how do you know which property is good? Can I come with you to open houses, et cetera? So from there, I think the real estate beca became more and more um, important in my life. You said you already have some uh, some rentals. Your father has some rentals. And yeah. How, how did that kind of, you know, experience affected your mindset? My dad came to the States um with like $20, as, as he would say, and I have two older sisters. So my dad started investing in real estate when I was pretty young. Um, he bought his per first like two family home in Elmhurst, Queens. And when he bought it, it wasn't as nice as it is now. Like it was pretty much like he would go and do like repairs himself because he did, couldn't afford having, you know, contractors or any professionals mm -hmm. um, fix up the place. So when I was growing up, going to school, my dad would come home really late. And, you know, whenever the landlord would um, have issues, he'll be the person that would have to drive mm -hmm. from, you know, we lived in uh, lower Manhattan all the way to Queens and the commute may have been like an hour or so. My dad, um, that was his first property in Alpers, Queens as a two family, multifamily. And then he acquired or bought a condo in another part of Qu Queens. And then this past year and a half, um, I helped my dad and I kind of joint venture in a way where we pulled mm -hmm. our money together to buy a two family in Brooklyn, which is where I currently live. Um, so my dad has been a very influential figure in my life in terms of learning about real estate and I help manage his rentals. So I'm a mm -hmm. free property manager. Um, luckily, the tenants are really, really nice. They don't give me any heartaches. So um, just collect the rent, deposit it in the, in the bank account and let my dad know everything is going well. So I'm curious because you said that, like you earlier shared, that investing in syndication is not something that we normally think that are accessible by the everyday you know, individuals that we have. Like what we, in our mind, we always think, oh, we should start buying a single family and then maybe a duplex and then maybe a triplex and continue stacking that over the years. What was that conversation with your dad? Because he's kind of more in, you said, in the one to four unit, smaller multifamily space, right? Was he on board with syndication that you're doing syndication right away? What was that conversation like? I actually haven't told my dad I was interested or I haven't told him directly that I invested in a real estate syndication deal. I think he was more hesitant about the idea. He's very traditional, like Chinese, older, mm -hmm 
you know, first uh, immigrants are a little bit more like we must own the property. We must do all the active work. Um, so he was a little bit hesitant about taking other people's money and then pulling it together to buy a larger asset. Um, but I think it's really interesting to see different ways you can make money in real estate. Yeah. Like my dad is very traditional. If you want to be an active role, then of course, like acquire, um, manage it yourself. And then with Perry and his team and all the GPs, you learn a different type of real estate. Mm -hmm. So it's like traditional and a newer way of raising or acquiring um, real estate. And I think for me, I've been pretty blessed with having those different um, views. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it has helped me evaluate wh which path I want to go down. I think your dad is more about having the control of the property. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. They like the control. Like, you know, I want to decide what's going on. I want to have everything on my own. And also, as we know, real estate is also a relationship and trust build business. Sometimes people who cannot do it because you know you have to go to different meetups, start a podcast, webinars and everything. Then people go for small ones. Nothing wrong <laughs> with that. But if you don't like control, if you don't want to have control, if you don't want management, go for syndication. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think um, for my dad, because, you know, the way it's expressed in immigrant culture is more of like, mm -hmm. if I own real estate, I have something to be proud of and I can yeah. show, you know, my relatives. Especially so whenever, <laughs> so my dad would take you no know, selfies of himself yeah. and each property and send it to my relative in China and say like, oh, like we just got this. <laughs> um, so it's a sense of pride for him. Whereas I think for syndications, it's more of, it's, it's passive, right? You can't take yeah. as much, ownership and you can't be as proud i think if you mm -hmm. were to manage in and own it yourself completely and you said that you know it's, it's kind of a proud feeling but like especially you have some sort of property in, in america like it's a, it's a yeah. huge thing and when you send the picture to back home they're like there must be a gold mine in u.s <laughs> i should be going there too <laughs> that's what everyone thinks back in like my relatives they're like oh my gosh you guys must be so wealthy and my dad's like really no like you know my dad worked as a chef in restaurants my entire life my mom worked in a nail salon so we really didn't grow up with like white collar jobs my dad just worked really hard and my you know he's always like oh they think we have all this money but we really don't <laughs> And I think that's what in immigrants project to back home to friends and family that we have all this stuff, but reality is totally different. Mm -hmm. That's the problem in US. But I think in real estate too, because people who own thousands of units, they're like very simple people, you yeah. know? So I, I think the way I view it is more of the more simple you are, the, the less material things you have in your life. And the, the more, more humble you are. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have as much to worry about as well. You just, you know, live life comfortably without being too extravagant. And in terms of the mindset between owning single family and smaller multifamily yourself versus participating in a syndication, uh, to your, based on your own experience, what do you feel like, what was that experience for you investing in the syndication versus um, investing in a, a duplex because I know that you have experience kind of on both sides. What 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 is that perspective like to you? Yeah, this is a great question. I think um, so. I help you know. I was on Perry's um, Sigma team in terms of um, doing a lot of the work for uh, North Haven Terrace, which is a two hundred eight unit property in Dallas, Texas. So I didn't raise, I didn't capital raise, but I did, I helped out in any way I can, like um, the presentations or the PowerPoint slides. I think in terms of mindset, that's where something I need to continue to prove on. For a smaller scale, multifamily, there is a, you do have a mindset of like, um, like I want to buy, I want to acquire. But I think when you are on the syndication side, it's just times 10 because um, you're raising money. It's a lot more energy required out of you yeah. to go and get it. And I think when I look at the successful GPs, they have more of a formidable mindset. Like Perry yeah. and um, the entire team, we were at one point going to lose the deal because of you know, the buyer didn't or the seller didn't want to decrease their price. And, you know, as a lead GP, he couldn't, you know, 
display any fears or any hesitation. He just said, like, this is what we're going to do. Um, let's just go for it. And of course, he did it in a very diplomatic way. So I think being a GP requires both mindset and leadership skills, whereas mm-hmm. Acquiring the smaller scale deals, like one or two units, it's a it's a smaller level of mindset that you need to you know go out and execute. I think for one or two units or up to four units, you can call yourself more like real estate investor. But when you become GP, it's more like entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do ten times more work. For sure. Um, when before I uh, got involved with the deal. Um, I thought, wow, capital raising is so glamorous. Syndication, like everyone looks like so cool. And then when I actually saw how the deal is, you know, formed and the, everything that goes into it, I was like, holy crap, it's a lot of work. Yeah. So when GPs, you know, have their cut of, you know, acquisition fee, like they totally deserve it. There's so much yeah. work that goes up, you know, the earnest money that they can lose. You know, there's a lot of work that the LPs may not realize when they're investing in their deal yeah. that goes on in the background. And also, every time I went for went to conference, I know I have to talk to a like hundred people. I depend on coffee. <laughs> um, I cannot stay. I cannot operate on a water. I can't because there's a lot of work. There's a lot of talking to do, and at the end of the day, you are like totally dried up in your throat, and then you don't want to see anybody. <laughs> I, I think another thing from that though is that if you want to be a if you want to be a sponsor on a deal, let's say that. Um, Christina, you were mentioning about capital raising. The partnership that you'll need to form, you need to have very, very experienced, and trusted operators to be a part of the team and to have good KPs that have great track records. And forming that team also takes a lot of time, a lot of time to form those relationships. So it's not just about, oh, like, we're here just to do hard work to create this deal and then take the acquisition fee. There's actually a lot, a lot of different aspects that goes into it. No, I saw it firsthand. Um, so I apologize. My dog's barking, but um, I, I completely agree. I think there's a lot of work that goes on in the background for sure. Yeah. And um, LPs do not realize that you can all GPs can also lose money, but L, LPs only make only lose money when the deal goes out. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. And so, Christina, what are you? Uh, what is your work right now? So, I know that you're involved in cash flow portal. So, where do you see kind of your career goes and your investing journey goes, and how how do you envision that? I think my role at cash flow portal has allowed me to be super involved in syndications. Um, I get to see firsthand, you know, me a lot of the GPs see how they structure their deals. Um, I mentioned them helping a lot with migrations. So with uh, GPs that are on different portals, they want to migrate over to cash flow portal. I get to see a lot of how they structure their deals, how they do their presentation slides. So it's a very, it's a learning experience for me. Um, it gives me more context. And I think, you know, yes, I do want to grow professionally, but my goal is to be a GP or to continue to syndicate. I think that's one of the biggest uh, challenge I see. I I can never envision myself like raising capital, but I know that at some point I can get there. So it's like that big hurdle that I have to overcome. Yeah. In this business, it takes very hard to go from, from zero to one. It's very easy to go from one to 10, but zero to one is very hard. And um, my next question is, where do you see your uh, financial journey of 2023? 2023. Um, So I definitely do want to, continue to learn. Um, So my partner and I are, we're looking into uh, two families in Jersey City. So we definitely are looking at this more in the lens of learning. Um, We do want to be GPs. And I think in order to be great operators, you have to learn on the smaller scale before you take anyone's money. And I would feel, um, I think it's more of a confidence booster and this you can prove to yourself that, hey, I took this property, um, I, I'm operating it, I have, you know, these metrics. And then you can, you know, go to the next level and syndicate. For me, that's why I see a progression. You know, for someone who doesn't have any units on their own just to syndicate, it's a little bit scary. And then you don't really have that, that factor of like, I did this on my own. 
So for 2023, I think it's more about, for me, acquiring um, a, um, a two a two family in Jersey City and then mm-hmm. maybe going into another syndication deal or investing. If I don't, I'm not on the active side, um, definitely on the passive side. Thanks, Christina, for sharing that. And um, just shifting gears a little bit, it, since that you're very exposed kind of on the uh, operational side of syndications, given that you're working on cash flow portal, can you give us a very clear breakdown? Not you, you don't have to go you know over the top on how clear it is. Just a basic breakdown of what a syndication is for our listeners. The syndications, GPs, and LPs. And I know that we've been talking about these terminologies because we're in the space. Um, but from a perspective of an operator, can you just explain how that process is and what are those terms for? In the most basic sense, uh, a syndication is pooling money together to acquire a large asset that one individual wouldn't be able to acquire by themselves. And there's two parties, one that does all of the work and then one that just gives money into the deal. So the passive investors who just contribute their funds is called a limited partner. There's a lot of benefits, um, tax write-offs, um, et cetera. And then on the active side, there's the GP who's, you know, ensuring that the um, the units, the business plan is implemented and executed. And they also are the main decision makers of when to sell, how should they renovate. Um, so they're the ones that make all the, the key uh, decisions. And I think syndication is really great for people who, you know, are high income earners. They don't want to be landlords. They don't want to learn about real estate. They want to focus on their career and everything in their life minus real estate. So they can just um, you know, they can just uh, invest in syndications. So people who are new new to syndication, if they have to build their team, what do you think, what kind of processes they need to follow or what, what kind of people do they need in their team? Definitely a person who is very analytical. I think when I look at Perry and Ed, why their partnership works out so well is because they keep each other very balanced. Mm-hmm. Like Perry is a really great, He's good at uh, analyzing things, but he's more of his leadership skills. He will like tell you, um, like when he takes notes, it's always like action items, very organized. And I can see that's the way he thinks. Um, so he's very leadership oriented, whereas Ed doesn't really direct you, but he's really good with um, numbers, spreadsheets, and he gets things done. He's very task oriented. So I think when you're forming a team, definitely someone who is more of the larger picture um, mm-hmm. has strong leadership skills. And then someone who is perhaps more analytical can run the numbers because at the end of the day, it is a numbers game. Yeah. And what are some of the resources that you have been following in order to learn about syndications? Resources as in books? Uh, yeah, books, uh, books podcasts. podcasts. Or mm-hmm. I think... Um, one is I started off more of reading um, The Hands-Off Investor by Brian Brook. Right there. Um, <laughs> so that one is the best book I've read about syndications because it breaks everything down so clearly. And I think um, another resource is reaching out to GPs. When I joined or went to a lot of conferences, I, I kept like a... Um, some people have a CRM, other people just have a spreadsheet. I, you know, did some research on people, emailed, asked them for their advice, did interviews. So that was more of a learning, um, mm. uh, a way I learned myself. And the more I reached out to the GPs, I realized they were just average people. Like some of them were in the army, others worked in the W2 job for a while, and then they, you know, pivoted over. So mm. it gave me more and more confidence that I can do it, perhaps you know, there was a time when I will start to capital raise and do the bigger deals. Um, But I know it is possible because all of these previous people I've met have done it. Why can not I? And what kind of conferences are you going to? to There are more, Mm -hmm. there are more um, uh, real estate conferences. So, you know, I'm very fortunate that at Cashflow Portal, we do go attend a lot of conferences. So last year we went to the best ever conference, Mm-hmm. Uh, Subtle Asian Real Estate, Limitless. Um, there was also uh, the Warriors Conference, Vertical Street Venture. So all of the big names. Um, I didn't we... see you at Limitless. I was, huh? there too. I was there too in the Limitless too. I didn't see you there. It was such a big conference. Yeah. I would say that's one of the biggest ones we went to. But I met um, Perry and uh, there was another guy. I forgot his name. Adrian. Oh, from Yeah. What was his name? Adrian, I think. 
Oh, Adrian, yes. Yeah. Uh, Adrian is our YouTube star. He does all mm. of the videos, yeah. um, like the face of the cash flow marketplace. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I I'm, I want to comment that it's good that when you separate resources, you separate kind of the more educational content and the in-person meetups because these two are really going hand in hand. And if I'd even argue that for people like me specifically who are more like just academic by default, going to in-person and get into that group of people to learn, oh, like I can actually do this to have that mindset change. It's very important. Like mm. once you get in the, once you get in the room, you're like, oh, I can do this. We're, we're all doing this, I guess now. Um, so I really commend you for ha at least having that um, action to go to all the conferences and uh, ha having cash flow portal also, I think it's a very good way to set you up in this yeah. journey. I would also recommend like just going to the, sm the smaller meetups and like in New York city, there's so many. Um, so I usually go to like the smaller ones and I feel mm. a bit more comfortable going to the smaller ones versus going with like my company because mm. it becomes more about, you know, the portal and selling versus like, you know, me, Christina and learning about them, you know, what they do. Um, mm. So I try to balance it out. Whereas um, yes, some of the conferences are more company oriented. And then for the smaller meetups, it's more like Christina, right. the, the real estate investor. For me, it's totally opposite. I'm more comfortable in big conferences because everybody's there for real estate learning and all this stuff. And everybody's scared to talk to a other person. So I'm like, <laughs> I can start the conversation. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite line to start a conversation with? Hey, how's it going? There you go. Do the eye contact. There. How's it going? Everybody just shake their hands and there you go. Start conversation. He's uh, he's too much of a natural. You can see he, he does not have a pickup line. He's his own pickup line. <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. Very yeah, very, very natural. My favorite is, um, you know, what brings you to the conference? And then, then they like start talking about like, you know, everything and, you know, they just open up. That's a great way to start. Yeah. Well, you can also pinpoint other things and just to bring them on the middle ground, the way you can feel both comfortable, then you can start talking. Because yeah. In, in initially, everybody's scared to like start the conversation. You can just ask, hey, how's it going? Then fr from slowly, just bring them to the middle ground. Now we are comfortable. There you go. Start the conversation. For someone who's, I, I consider myself very introverted. Um, I don't we usually go up to people and like start a conversation. So joining this whole real estate conference, real estate world has really pushed me to be a little bit more outgoing. Mm, um, so it's, one, one, <laughs> so it's a, a one mindset shift. You know, you just got to go out there and talk to random people. I'm ambivert. It's like I'm sitting in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I slide closer to the introverted side. Awesome. Uh, Christina, I want to thank you for being here today. This is uh, thank you for sharing your journey and kind of how you got gotten started and um, the differences between, in terms of mindset, the difference between the smaller multifamilies and the large ones, because I, I don't think that we have touched on this topic before. And it's very important to not just think about this in terms of how much money you're putting in or how much more returns, but it because it's really more of a, a trigger in your mind of, can I do this? So I really yeah. appreciate that point that you've made. Yeah, of course. Thank, Thank you so you much, much for having me. Yeah. I think um, mindset, it's not like, yeah, you have a positive mindset. I think it's an ongoing journey because some days I'm just like, yeah, let's do this. And then the other days I'm like, ah, oh, am I like, you know, you doubt yourself. So mindset, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a roller coaster where you just have to like really train yourself to be consistent. I love you mentioned the word train because you have to be very conscious about that of your of your down down part and the up part to keep it a upward trajectory to make yourself better and better yeah that's for sure and before this wrap, we wrap this up if somebody wants to reach out to you to learn more about you something like this and where they can reach out yeah they can always email me at christina sierra at gmail.com or my we have the cash flow marketplace as well my profile mm -hmm. is there if anyone wants to reach out um there's a other uh gps on on the website as well um that are a little bit more experienced than i am so feel free to reach out to them as well we will be putting this in the show note as well all right awesome thank you so much christina again this is a pleasure to, uh speaking with you thank, thank you Austin. Awesome. thank you ahmed yeah have a wonderful Bye. weekend Bye -bye. Thank you.